Today we're doing street photography with this, the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. Big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. All right, so this is one of my favorite videos to make on this channel anytime I'm testing a new smartphone. In my opinion, street photography is the ultimate test for any camera. It's fast paced, the lighting is changing, color is changing, and it will give you a very clear understanding of what cameras are good at and what they're not so good at. Now, if you're new to the channel, this is how a video like this works. I'll go out and make street photography, share the photos as I'm talking, and at the end of the video, I'll break down my favorite one and give it a rank out of five. Personally, a lot of the photos in today's video are not my favorite, but they do provide good examples. This was not the best smartphone I've ever used for street photography, especially when I compare it to things like the Oppo Find N3 and the iPhone 15 Pro Max. So to set the stage for this video, let me break down the settings I was using with this camera. In this test, I decided to use Expert Raw. Now, the reason I wanted to use Expert Raw is because that is what Samsung is promoting as how to get the most quality out of your phone photos with this smartphone. I've also seen multiple YouTube videos of people using Expert Raw and raving that it's the best way to make pictures. And also when you're using Expert Raw, you get a picture profile designed by Samsung to get the most out of these raw files, similar to how Apple uses Pro Raw. When you bring a photo into Lightroom from an iPhone, a Pro Raw picture profile is applied to maximize the sensor, the dynamic range, all the things happening with the photo. Samsung has the same thing with Expert Raw. So every photo in this test was using what they claim to be their latest and greatest when it comes to their raw files in their smartphone. So to start, let's go over the things that this test showed me I really liked about the S24 Ultra. First and foremost, the colors you get with the S24 Ultra are absolutely fantastic. Now, based on my research, it appears that the S24 Ultra allows for 16-bit color, whereas the iPhone allows for 12-bit color, which makes sense. The colors in the edits on these photos, even when they just came straight out of camera, look better than pretty much any smartphone I've used. I really liked the color rendering on these photos. I felt like they edited very similar to what I'm used to with other cameras and just everything looked really nice, especially on the more artsy type images. I also loved the sharpness of these photos. Now, there's something weird happening with these raw files and there is another side to this proverbial coin, which we'll talk about later, but in some of the images, they looked extremely sharp. Now, when you zoom in, you do get a little bit of that crunchy over digital look, but there's something appealing about these images and I don't know, it just seemed to work for me. And on top of that, the editing capabilities of these files was fantastic. The raw files were very malleable. There was a lot of dynamic range to them. In most of the photos, I had to drop the shadows and blacks quite a bit to get the look that I was going for, but overall, I felt like they edited very well and the workflow was while weird, pretty much similar to what I'd expect with any other camera. Now, before we get into everything that I dislike about the S24 Ultra, I briefly want to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. My photography business would not be possible without my website, evanramp.com, which is built on Squarespace. And the reason Squarespace is so important to my business is it gives me control over my website. You see, years and years ago, I actually had my website built by a web developer, and it was such a pain because I constantly had to reach out to them anytime I wanted to change my site. And I knew my website was my bridge between my audience. It was my professional face on the internet and I had no control over it because I didn't know anything about web design. With Squarespace, I have the ability to customize my site with no experience with ease. They have drag and drop templates for website building as well as email marketing. So now I can connect with my audience with their email tools and I can also sell my products like my photo books and my presets. On top of that, I can host my portfolio, which in my opinion is one of the better looking portfolios on a Squarespace site. I'll go ahead and link the video in the description breaking down how I did that. And on top of that, I have a contact me page to allow me to connect with potential clients. You can do all these things as well, even if you are a complete beginner, because Squarespace makes it that easy. So just go to squarespace.com slash FMRAMP to start a free trial and use code FMRAMP to save 10% at checkout. When you're using that free trial, you can look at the number of different videos I have linked in the description down below, breaking down a bunch of different ways to use Squarespace. So go to squarespace.com slash FMRAMP, start a free trial, follow one of those tutorials linked down below. The portfolio one, personally, I think is my favorite. And when you're ready to sign up, you can use code FMRAMP at checkout to save save that 10%. Big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. All right, now this is where people might get a little bit mad at me. These are the negatives of the S24 Ultra that I realized doing this street photography test. 
first and foremost, the processing time of these photos when you're using Expert Raw is absolutely atrocious. There is no timing a shot with this camera. If you're in a situation like street photography or action photography or anything where there's a split second chance that you have to capture a moment, don't rely on this phone at all. This image of someone walking through my frame, I think would have been a photo I really liked, but I missed it just because of the processing time of this camera. And there's another one of a bike going through this beam of light. That image also was one that could have been good if the timing was on point. Now, it is part of photography to occasionally miss a shot, but the weird thing that happened with the S24 Ultra is I would take the photo and check it and it looked good. And then once the photo was done processing, which I'm assuming is because it's making multiple multiple photos and putting them all together in post, the image wasn't what I expected it to be. So if you're relying on speed and timing using this smartphone, this is definitely not it. You're going to want to shoot in JPEG or you're going to want to shoot maybe in pro mode to get a little bit faster of a speed. Now on top of that, Expert Raw does not support the ultra wide camera, which is extremely disappointing because the iPhone captures pro raw images in every single lens that you use. So the fact that you can only take advantage of the software and computational elements in this camera if you're using the standard lens or one telephoto lens is extremely disappointing. It dramatically limits the versatility of this camera, especially when you compare it to other smartphones that also capture RAW files. Now this might be the biggest issue with the S24 Ultra in this test, and this is the fact that some of the images had this extreme noise reduction applied to them. I'm talking if you cranked your noise reduction to level 100 in Lightroom, that is what the photo looked like straight out of camera. This is the best example of that. And I would assume the reason this is happening is because like I talked about in previous videos, the S24 Ultra has some issues with noise, especially in the shadows. So if you're in a situation where the software in this phone is making a photo to try to balance the highlights and the shadows of an image, I would assume the phone is capturing the shadows at a higher ISO resulting in noise and then the software is trying to reduce the noise by applying this crazy over-the-top noise reduction effect. Is it the end of the world? Maybe for some people, no, but it was just really weird to me and unsightly, and especially the fact that it was apparent in some photos and not apparent in other photos, and there was nothing you could do about it, made it just very weird and made it something that I didn't want to use. Like seeing that and imagining having the perfect shot happen and then having this noise reduction automatically applied to your photo takes all the creative control out of your hands and is something I don't want to deal with. And that right there was the biggest lesson of this test. Expert Raw is not something you want to use if you're looking to maintain control over your photos and achieve an artistic creative result. Personally, I enjoyed the photos I made in my initial test using Pro Mode much more. I enjoyed having that raw DNG file that I could edit, apply noise reduction to on my own, and maintain control over the final image. Unlike the painful result we got using Expert Raw, which had all this noise reduction applied, and there was nothing we could do about it. So as for my favorite photo on the day, it was a really tough day of street photography, didn't get anything I was super happy with, but I do love the way this image looks of this person walking through the camera. It's a pretty artistic photo. I just wish the camera was able to capture it at the time that I expected. I wanted to have more distance between the person's feet as they're walking through the shot and because of that I'm not really going to rank this one very high. I'm going to give this one a 1.8 out of 5. That might be one of the lowest rankings I've ever given a photo in any of these videos but like I said it was a pretty tough day and I was kind of struggling with the tool I was using but nonetheless it's fun to get out and shoot. If you enjoy these street photography type videos let me know in the comments and leave a thumbs up because I will continue to make them. Appreciate y'all watching. I'll see y'all in the next one.